Welcome, 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 everyone, to another edition of Rich Man in Training Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Thomas S. Dot. We're here for a great, great, great podcast. And what we're going to talk about today is talking about STEM and entrepreneurship with my buddy here, Justin Schaefer. Did I say that right, Justin? Just want to be sure I got it right. Okay, be sure I got straight because I'm, I'm, I'm notorious for screwing up names. <laughs> but in any case, man, Justin is just a freaking rock star. I've been following this guy. He's doing some killer work over there on the East Coast and even through the whole United States with TED Talks and just um, keynote speaking and getting people engaged in technology and entrepreneurship, especially for the minorities um, in the black community. I'm very excited about this because it's not enough people coming out of those communities that's taking advantage of the technology that can transition your life and build a future for you and your darn family. So with that being said, I want to give it up to Justin. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, Justin. You're a PhD student at Columbia, huh? Yes, sir. Man, check that out, man. Uh, this dude, he's not just a rock star. He, he's on his way to go ahead and become Mr. Professor. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call you Mr. Professor going forward. So, you know, you, I, I'm going to speak it in existence. You're already a professor, brother. And I really appreciate what you're doing for this world. And I really appreciate what you're doing to bring STEM to the forefront because as many as you people know, STEM, or if you don't know, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Some people might see STEAM. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Either way it goes, it's very important that we get folks engaged in this because this is where your Mark Zuckerberg's come from, your Bill Gates comes from. This is where uh, even G Jeff Bezos, believe it or not, yeah, he may came out of the finance world, but he's using technology to drive Amazon. And it's mm -hmm. folks here like Justin who is crushing it, bringing this to the forefront of those who can't get a taste of it because they're at disadvantage. So Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Thomas. Appreciate it, man. And, you know, like to add to your point, what I wanted to say was, you know, a lot of times I think of like the cure for cancer or yes. maybe the solution to the environmental catastrophes that are already afflicting our planet, already afflicting our people. Right. Like yes. you got stuff like environmental justice where people in at risk communities are exposed to more pollutants. Mm. Like the solution to those problems could be trapped in the mind of a kid that just hasn't been adequately exposed. You know, he hasn't experienced access to STEM in a way that that makes it cool for him. And so he's yes. not motivated to pursue STEM and he instead goes down the path of being a rapper uh, mm -hmm. or an NBA player because he thinks that's what's cool. Uh, and so I think a big thing that I do and then what I've dedicated myself to is being that first point of engagement for kids that says, yo, STEM actually is dope. STEM actually it is, is yeah. cool. Uh, and I mean, I, I wish that I would have had that when I was a kid. Well, you and me both, it, you know, I come out as gang banging drugs and prostitutes, pimps and all that stuff. And we, we weren't, you know, the, the best we could do in chemistry was cooking up rocks, be open and honest. <laughs> now, that, that's, the, that's the truth of the matter. And I keep it real. Everybody knows I'm 100 here. So in any case is tell us a little bit about your transition and transformation. How did you get into STEM and you know, how did you become this entrepreneur to become a speaker, TEDx? Talk, talk to us. Give us, the, you know, lay it on us. All right. So first things first, born and raised on the south side of Chicago. All right. Mm. So I got to put on for my city, man. <laughs> south side? <laughs> uh, yeah, south side. Uh, but it, it feels it's so crazy because, you know, where when I was in the south side, I was always interested in this stuff. I was interested in computers and I was spitting fun science facts. I was kind of like the nerdy kid that would spit science facts. And you'd be like, yo, like, what are you talking about, man? Let's go play this basketball. Uh, and so, you know, for once I became a teenager, I started getting involved in that kind of stuff and some of the other bad stuff, uh, because that was the stuff that people thought was cool. Uh, yeah. And so it was no one around to make STEM cool for me. Uh, I ended up finding out, though, right before I went to college, uh, and this is kind of the thing that got my life together. One of the things yes. uh, was I found out my grandfather on my father's side, I was raised by a single parent. Grandfather on my father's side was an engineer. Mm. He was an engineer who had a patent for a circuit in the VCR. Uh, and so, yeah. And so this guy, I mean, I ended up finding this on Google and, uh, and later finding out more about it through some family members. Uh, but it really like solidified the significance of STEM in my DNA, you know, mm -hmm. and, and for me, you know, he had passed away by the time I really understood the importance of that. Mm -hmm. achievement. But, you know, that that gave me the inspiration to go to school, went to Hampton, graduated top of my class. I didn't like research, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a marine environmental science major. I was in science labs. Uh, I was doing the traditional science research stuff, and I was doing good in school, but I just didn't enjoy research science. And so, uh, I, but I always had this knack for speaking. I ended up doing a lot of speaking all over the country, even when I was in college, uh, because I was president of Hampton's uh, student body and, and things like that. So from there, 
Uh, I went into a tech job. We talked about it a little bit before. Yes. I was a consultant. I did not like it. They were throwing me some good bread too, uh, <laughs> but I, I didn't feel I didn't feel purpose. I didn't feel like I was in a job that had purpose. And because it lacked purpose, I was up late at night just thinking, plotting my next move, planning stuff. Mm-hmm. I made a decision when I walked in the cubicle for my first the first day. I said, "I'm leaving here in a year. And I'm gonna <laughs> figure my way out of this thing." Uh, and so saved up money, lived like lived like a high school student, bought all my furniture on Craigslist, uh, got everything together, uh, came up with this plan of I'm going to make STEM cool for kids. I didn't have a financial plan at the time, yes. um, but I had some content, developed a small team of, of folks that helped me out with the content. We mm-hmm. kind of started carving out the subject matter expertise of STEM and education and science and science communication. And a year, a year after that, me setting foot in that cubicle, I quit my job. And so I moved to New York City. That's where I'm at now. Okay. Uh, and so I just full time went all in. My savings was dwindling every month and I had to, it was my brain versus the world. And I had to figure <laughs> it out. Uh, and so, I mean, this is, yeah, that's, that's what I'm used to doing. Uh, and, and that's how I got the most out of my work ethic. You know, taking that consistent paycheck for me, obviously I'm in a privileged position where I don't have kids and a family I got to worry about, right? As I'm 24 years old now. I was 21 at the time when I made the decision. Uh, and so I was able to kind of really live conservatively, humbly, and uh, and just go all in. Uh, and and I know my work ethic really comes out when I'm not getting that paycheck every two weeks. When I gotta eat, when I only eat when I kill. <laughs> that's it. Uh, and so that's 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 how I was able to uh, to really take things to the next level. Uh, and so yeah, it's been in here in New York City for two years. I'm now, as of eight months ago, financially sustainable and and exponentially increasing. So I'm traveling all over the world. I speak to kids about STEM. I mm-hmm. run STEM programs in New York City. We serve over uh, almost a thousand kids now. Oh wow! We work with Microsoft, we work with Google, we worked with MIT's Media Lab. Uh, I'm also, like you said, I'm, I'm getting my doctorate in science education as well. Uh, so I'm probably not going to take the professor route. I might be doing bigger lectures in like the you know thousand, thousand, five thousand, mm-hmm. that kind of range. Uh, that's kind of my style. I like the, the bigger the better. I mean, yeah. I'm, I think I'm more of a conservative dude in terms of like. Uh, like one-on-one conversations or like in groups of people, but like there's a different side of me that comes out when it's about 5,000 people in the room. And so that's when I feel like I'm at my best. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I've been doing now. Uh, and, you know, STEM programs, speaking, and uh, we're trying to build this bus called the Magic Cool Bus. Okay. Uh, and so I'm, I've been able to sustain that now consistently for about eight months. And so just, just keep on keeping on. Well, con- congratulations on all, all the success and what I really love the fact that you're giving us the real journey of entrepreneurship, what you need to do to get to where you have to go. You know, like you explained, you saved your money, you built yourself a little cash runway to get yourself going. And something I heard that even happened to me was your cash goes fast, your savings goes, your savings goes faster than you anticipate when you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I, I think the first six months of me and being an entrepreneur, you know, open and honest, I blew through hundred grand. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a chunk of change, but I had some other people I had to pay too. So, so they were, they were eating some of my bread. The other thing I just loved about the humble aspects of what you're saying, Hey, you, you knew what you had to do. You knew that, Hey, I got to live tight and I got to be sure I wash my pennies and I'm going to go through this transition. And you had a good mind state. You weren't negative. You kept, I, I presume just hearing the conversation, you kept yourself positive, kept yourself going forward. So and tell, tell us, you know, in, in your mind, when you're going through this transition, how were you feeling? Where was it fearful? Were you excited or was it a mix of both? And now let us, let us know about this. I was terrified. I was apprehensive. I think what really pushed me over the edge was I'll be listening to content like this, right? Where I hear people talking about it and how hard it was or how easy it was at a certain point and how they had to put in the hours. I'm like, I could do that for one. And then also I surrounded myself uh, with, the positive role models that actually were doing this stuff. I did a lot of on the side, you know, I was mm-hmm. working a full-time job, but I, I did a lot of free labor for entrepreneurs on mm. the side uh, yes. that were kind of maybe three, five years in. Uh, and from there, I kind of understood the nuances of how it all works and that it's, it's really possible. And that every step of the way, they're telling me like, yo, so when you quit your job, when you quit your job, <laughs> cause they kind of want me to work for them. I'm like, yeah. well, I'm trying to do my own thing. Uh, and, and, but I, I really think that, and this is something huge. I mean, if you have the opportunity to do this, if you can, if you can shadow or have like an apprenticeship uh, mm-hmm. or even like a, a paid internship at, at, at the, at the, as the best under someone who's actually doing it, who's actually an entrepreneur, it makes it that much more real for you. You get mm-hmm. to really understand uh, exactly what it takes 
to, to make this lifestyle possible. And uh, yeah, so it, it, it's been a, it's been an absolute journey of, of fear. I've, I've experienced every emotion. I think that's what Nipsey Hussle said <laughs> uh, one of his songs recently. You know, his one of the recent lyrics was, I, I experienced every emotion with this. You know, I, I've been at my, at the, the happiest I've ever been in my life. I felt the most defeated I've ever felt. Uh, it's been, it's been a complete spectrum of emotion, a complete spectrum of hustle. Uh, some days I feel like a creative genius and other days I just feel like I ain't got it. Uh, <laughs> but every day I build and, and this is something Will Smith said, every day I lay a brick as perfectly as I can lay it. Uh, and well so, put, uh, yes. Well, yeah, that's so. well put, phenomenally well put. That, that's re really cool. So y you're a speaker. I know that I've seen you on LinkedIn. I see you doing big things. I saw you on the TEDx talk and just, just really phenomenally just all around the country. Explain to us about how this works. You know, you want to become an, a speaker. Mm -hmm. You want to do a TEDx. You, you get people engaged. How, how do you go about this? A lot of volunteer work at first. Okay. Uh, so this is actually something I really started doing, like I said, when I was in college. Okay. Uh, that, was, that was when I started to build the skill and the repertoire of like, I'm comfortable speaking on stage in front of whoever. Yes. Uh, so I kind of conquered that part of myself in college. Mm. Uh, but from there, you know, it's like, OK, you, you want, you, you're comfortable speaking. Now I want to be a motivational speaker. It's like, OK, everyone's a motivational speaker. <laughs> so, you know, how do you differentiate yourself from what everyone else does and what is your expertise? And so, I, I you know, I, I had to drill down and niche down mm. and, and continue to become an expert with an expert with an expert to find something that specifically people will come to me for. Uh, and so that took a lot of time. Uh, I actually got my first professional booking when I was still full-time employed in 2016. Mm. Uh, and so it's kind of funny how it happened. Uh, it's actually the title of my TED Talk now. So what they did was they, they reached out to me and I said, I want to be a motivational speaker. And they're like, okay, here, come talk to our 40 plus managers uh, mm. at Delaware State University. That's where it was at, in Delaware. And I was like, okay, they were like, we want to talk to you about Generation Z. I was like, what the heck is Generation Z? <laughs> Uh, so I went back, did my research. I said, okay, I can do it. Went back, did my research, prepped, you know, I, I over-prepared probably for three weeks, practiced like 20, 30 times mm -hmm. to make sure to make sure that I was going to kill this thing. Uh, and did all this research on this topic. Generation Z ends up being the generation after millennials. Uh, yes. These are folks that I just so happen to mentor and they're also digital natives, right? The people yes. that, the kids that have iPhones and iPads in their hands. So I started to realize like, wait a minute, I can really carve this thing out. And even though I'm 20, I was 21 at the time, like even though I'm 21, I, I know more about this than a lot of older folks. And I can demystify this generation yes. for older folks. And so like literally through them asking me to give that talk is like where I started to carve out my expertise. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, so it, it took time. I mean, a lot of a lot of other like so I did that when it was paid. But then I did a lot of other free ones to practice that talk and improve mm -hmm. that talk. Uh, some of them maybe pay you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. And then once I did the TED talk, you got like this polished manicured talk that I, you know, I worked out several times. I ended up just freestyling that. Uh, that was oh, wow. off the cuff uh, because I've been, I've been given that so much. It was in my muscle memory. And so, uh, yeah, so I ended up doing some numbers. And so that's kind of put me on the, giving me the platform to, to do a lot of this stuff professionally. Columbia University also helps. But I think the main thing for anyone that's interested in being a speaker because uh, a lot of people don't believe that that's actual financially you know like something that people can get paid to do yes um, is you have to be an ex you have to be a couple things you need to be a celebrity like snooki like snooki probably gets paid a lot of money because she has name recognition <laughs> yes butts and seats or you have to be an expert yeah uh, and so and in order and not only do you have to be an expert but it has to be very clear to people who are interested in booking a speaker that you are the person that is the expert. And so that's a huge marketing thing. You have to know your stuff when it comes to presenting yourself as a subject matter expert and as a thought leader. And, and I love what you said about you have to be an expert, but something I also heard that's just so important that, you know, you gave us a hidden nugget there. The amount of preparation you've done to put this into your muscle memory that you could do it on the fly. A lot of people have always asked me, how, Thomas, can you do this? How you can do that? How you can just, just jump on the fly and just people who actually come speak and everything else. Well, to your point, I practice it over and over and over again to the point that I've mastered it in my muscle memory. So just boom, it comes off the top. So congratulations for even learning that so young in life. I'm an old man compared to you. <laughs> well, well, yeah, man, I appreciate yeah. it. I think for me, uh, it's, it's been, uh, and I'm sure this is something you can also attest to. I think I've, I've kind of developed an attitude where anything that made me uncomfortable, I just attack it. 
Absolutely. I, I don't like, I don't, I'm afraid of being afraid. I don't like the feeling <laughs> of, you know what I mean? Getting in front of people, my heart's beating fast. And I'm, yes. and that's how I used to be. You know, I used to, the first time I spoke, I was probably like 10 years old. It was actually mm-hmm. my first like time speaking in front of like 10 people and the tears were coming down my eyes. Like I was terrified of it, but I more than I was terrified of speaking. I hated the feeling of being terrified. Uh, and so now, you know, I'm doing all these, I don't even get nervous. It doesn't matter how, how big the crowd is. I haven't been nervous in a while. I'll say that. Man, been, I can tell you, you jumped right on this and just went to work. <laughs> I've been watching some of your videos. I said, this, this guy's polished. He's, you know, he's really good at what he does. I know he really studies his art. He's really, you know, he really is passionate about what he does. And it's just, it's very clear. Your success is the relation, the result of your hard work, your passion, and you being really focused on, you know, getting that, that, that knowledge or the information across the board. So really mm-hmm. congratulations. And I'm very happy that somebody of your, your age, you're telling them, you know, you tell me you did this in your early twenties and you got people still trying to figure it out. So to people in their twenties who's following this understand, man, you can do this and you can be an expert at something at that age. I remember uh, for myself, I used to sit there and think you had to be 40 years old to be an expert until mm-hmm. somebody tapped me on my shoulder. I was probably about 27 when they asked me to come speak the first time. And, you know, they put my name up there and they put me as an expert in cloud technology. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm an expert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, I'm an expert. <laughs> I said, I guess so. But when I hit the stage and I lit it up, I realized at that point, damn, I am an expert. So you don't have to be 50 years old to go speak on something. As long as you get the knowledge, you do the research and work very hard, you can become that expert. You really can. Right. Oh, and, that kind and, of be, yes. Go ahead, please, please. I'm loving it. Give it to well, us. Well, well, yeah, man. I just, I really think, you know, like when you, when you put, you also, in order to build that expertise, like it, it's awesome that, you know, your first one was an invite. Uh, and like I told you, like the first one with me was an, an invite as well. Yes. But I think, you know, the, the expertise on STEM I built out, like I didn't give a paid talk on STEM until like a couple years ago. So mm-hmm. but those, I, I gave, I gave so many volunteer talks where yes. it's like, I'm going to build this expertise by doing it. Yes. Um, but I know the information, but I need to be effective at presenting the information because I'm working with high school kids. They're gonna yes. they're gonna clown me if I'm wet. <laughs> so you know, so it's like you gotta you gotta be really good, and that just comes from doing it. Um, Absolutely. So times is you gotta just put yourself in that uncomfortable position initially. Yes. Uh, so that you know you 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 get to later on use that as media materials and uh, and an experience, just real experience to mentally put yourself in that place of like when you're on stage and someone's offering you ten thousand dollars to speak in front of you know, 5,000 people, uh-huh. not, you're not flinching by it that, at the thought of that because you've done this so many times, you've worked it into your muscle memory like we talked yes. about. And those are all good valid points. And I love that you're bringing this all up because people think, hey, I'm going to become the speaker and this rich dude overnight. And they don't realize the efforts you have to really put into it. You know, the hours of preparation, like you're saying for a 30 minute talk, you've put weeks into, <laughs> you put weeks into preparation for that. And oh, that, that just attests to your work ethic and everything that you're doing. So yeah. I, I want to switch this up a little bit. I want to focus here a little bit on STEM. I, I know that, especially in the low-income communities and especially in the communities of color, that STEM is not really pushed very hard. You're talking about people want to be rappers, they want to be um, athletes or whatever it may be, comedians. But there's a whole world that they're missing where they can make way much, you know, way way more money in technologies and engineering and everything else. And tell me, kind of from your perspective, what what is it about STEM that maybe we're missing the boat on? So I think there's a couple of things. One of the big things to me is that the, the black community, especially, uh, this is something I experienced growing up, yes. uh, is we have a lot of times PTSD when it comes to STEM concepts, STEM information, science information, math information, yeah. right? Like if I started just talking about, well, I'm an anesthesiologist or anthrop- like people kind of flinch at the, the mm-hmm. word because they're like, oh, wait a minute, hold on, this is too much information, it's intimidating. And it's because a lot of times we've had such poor teachers or instructors that and that they've, they've presented it to us in this terrible way so many times that we're traumatized mm-hmm. when when people present us with new information pertaining to STEM. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of times it's part of it is unlearning that. And or, you know, and for me, it's like intervening, like right at that point where in middle and high school, when kids feel like, oh, no, nah, I don't know about this stuff. It's kind of lame. Mm-hmm. I like sports. I like girls. Uh, you know, like, yeah, I come in and I'm like, wait a minute. Well, that, that's all related. You know what I mean? Like Metro Boomin is some a producer that a lot of the kids like today. He makes a lot of the hot beats. Yes. Uh, he's a STEM professional. He's an audio engineer. Oh, wow. He okay. engineers beats. I mean, and, and a lot of times kids don't think of it that way. But I, I help kids to kind of conceptualize this idea. Pretty much every girl, every, every young lady that we work with uh, in New York City, like they'll talk about, oh, I use hair products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
there's a chemist behind the scenes that's getting hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars to create those chemicals, right? Correct. I think the biggest problem, and it's another part of the issue, is that, you know, one, we got this PTSD, but secondly, it's not made relevant to us. Uh, and Correct. so I think overcoming that PTSD, uh, part of overcoming that effectively is creating these dope experiences for people that are enjoyable, where they associate cool and STEM, dope yes. and tech, fun and science. Uh, and then from there, you, they start to realize, like, oh, wait a minute, this stuff is kind of cool. Okay, wait, maybe I could do a career in this kind of stuff. Wait, they make how much money? <laughs> wow, okay, maybe I really should look in this direction. And I think, like, that's the decision-making process that a lot of the kids you work with make. Uh, and so there's kids I've worked with now that have gone on to MIT. Uh, you know, we're still only two years in with the programs mm -hmm. that we've done, but we've already seen some pretty significant impacts uh, just because kids are not – kids were inspired. Like, oh, wait, I can do this. And yeah. the problem is, I think, is, is – the other problem with us in STEM is once we get there, right? Yes. And this, we were just talking about, uh, there's so many times where I've been the only one in the room that looked like me that had the culture that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time when I was in my tech job where I had a manager, well, well-meaning guy, he's a good guy. Um, he tried to pet my hair. And, <laughs> you know, like I said, I'm from the South Side of Chicago. So, you know, I had like a knee-jerk reaction. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> what you doing, man? <laughs> so... Like that was, that was kind of my immediate reaction, but I had to realize, you know, wait, hold on, this guy doesn't understand that we don't do that to each other. That's not how, we, not, we, not, we don't do that. Uh, and so, you know, part of it was just for me uh, schooling him on, on some of those things and, and a, in a way that, was, uh, that, that wasn't like, you know, reprimanding. Uh, yeah. But still, there's so many of those kinds of experiences that we have that even pertain to us, like the perception of our competence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, something I've heard that was really powerful is, a lot, when when we we want to succeed in a lot of professional fields, STEM included, especially STEM, yes. we almost have to we almost have to remove ourselves from any traces of our culture. We have to code switch, right? We have to use types of thinking that are not common in our cultures uh -huh. in order to be perceived as competent in these places. Uh, and so that's a huge part of it. So it's, we got this PTSD; it's yes. not made relevant to us. And once we get in there, we still got to fight. Uh, yes. So, you know, it's a systematic thing that is keeping us out, but it's where all of the jobs are going right now. That's where all of the job growth is right now. So if kids aren't engaging this way and if adults aren't thinking about how STEM pertains to their jobs every day, well, they're going to probably be replaced by a robot at some point or someone from outside of the country. That's just simply the, the, the mathematical, the statistical dynamics of how this thing is going to work. And those, those are all great points. I, I know um, I got friends over in India. I got kind of a good buddy of mine who was Stanford and did phenomenally well for herself and built a tech company. And he was telling me over in India, they're like whole villages are just STEM related. That's all they're doing. Just IT, it's engineering. That's all they're driven off of. And, you know, they're doing very well and they're crushing it. And they even have schools where it's like boarding schools, just all STEM related. And you're right, we are definitely missing the ball there in that different perspective. And for those, again, who fall, have been following me, you know that's where I come from. I come from technology, I come from an engineering background, designing systems, and to your, to your point, Justin, yeah, when I got to that level, I remember graduating, I think I was the only brother that was graduating out of that, um, they called it decision sciences, that's what it was. I was the only, they came out of there, and on top of that, when I got into the corporate world, again, I was probably one of the only brothers who was in that world. And I had went to Orange County, which is a prominent, you know, very well-to-do county here in Southern California. And that was a question that was posed to me when I was on the panel. What could we do to get minorities more related to this technology? And to your point was that we have to make it cool. We have to yep. figure it out. We, re we really do. And yeah. I really try to show people how cool it is. And I actually, I was talking to DJ in, not any DJ, I'm sorry, that was EB. DJ Wonder, you, you might know who DJ Wonder is from Shade 45. Um, yeah, I mean, you said Envy too. You know, Envy went to my alma mater too. That oh, he you? did? Okay, see, yeah, he went to Hampton. Yeah. These, these are DJs that we're all like hurraying about. And we're like, dude, you know, but you don't realize they got degrees behind them. Mm -hmm. um, what's that? DJ Wonder, he, uh, I'm going to be releasing his podcast this Saturday. Well, okay. Yeah, where the case is. And um, with that, DJ Wonder, I, I didn't know. He, he has an engineering background. In essence, he, he went to school for audio and um, digital engineering of some sort over in New York. And he, he came from, I believe it was Connecticut or Delaware or something like that. Hmm. And yeah, and he just, he just, it, just to hear him talk about it, and he's the executive producer for Sway, you know, what Sway in the Morning, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I was just like, wow. You know, and he's just laying it on me. He's like, this dude is smart. <laughs> I 
But yeah. he comes from a STEM background. He really does. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize these people who are mixing these beats, these people who's doing these, these videos, they're coming from the STEM or STEAM yeah. background. That's where they're coming from. Yeah, and I, and and it's yeah, it's just it's so it's so connected to every single thing that we do in 2019. Yes, so, and so we can either we can either consume it or we can create it and produce it. And that's uh, what we need to do. We we need to create and produce, and we're already doing it. We just don't. A lot of us don't realize that's what's being had. What's happening behind the scenes? Right, right. So let's yeah. talk about entrepreneurship in the essence of let's mix it with the STEM. So tell me, you know, you got somebody here. They are. They don't know much about STEM. But how do you relate entrepreneurship to the STEM fields? How, how, how do you do that? So I think that design thinking is a big part of, of mm. the programs that we do now. And, you know, this, this process of, of thinking about a problem deeply and then iterating solutions over and over again, coming up with different solutions. Yes. Uh, and that's part of the way that scientists and engineers think and folks in technology, right? Correct. Uh, and so, you know, I think that STEM, like, the, the, the underlying parts of STEM, right? Doing your background research as a scientist or developing a minimum viable product as an engineer or someone in technology, yes. or just doing the math necessary to understand calculated risks. Like yes. all of those things are deeply related to entrepreneurship and business development. Uh, and so, you know, we, we create that clear correlation in students' minds today because so many students, this is something I've encountered again and again, I work with thousands of generations of students all over the country. Yes. So many of them want to be entrepreneurs. Uh, and so, you know, there's this huge, because they, they see that they, and they want to be digital entrepreneurs. You know, they, they see, <laughs> yes. see the millennials and how we did. They see the Kylie Jenners and, and folks like that, that have really been able to monetize and, and experience extreme success from, from digitizing, you know, their assets. And they want to do it too. And yes. so, you know, the way to, for me to actually engage them and keep their attention is like, all right, so most of y'all want to be entrepreneurs in here. How many of you guys understand the relationship between that and STEM? Well, we're going to talk about it. Because mm -hmm. if you want to be an entrepreneur today and you don't know anything about STEM, you're going to be behind the curve. Uh, and so, you know, that's how I get their attention. We do Shark Tank style pitch Ooh. competitions, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, uh, which is, I mean, once again, you develop a product um, and you're, you're iterating solutions, but we keep that in STEM. So like, you know, how are you going to cure cancer? Sell it to me. Yes. Because uh, I mean, at the end of the day, all those folks in STEM, even if you're a researcher, even if you're developing a technology product, you got to think about what's the greater impact on the world. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. And so we, um, so that, that's a part of what we do in terms of uh, relating STEM to entrepreneurship with our kids. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that the STEM skills I acquired for one, the biggest thing, and that's something I tell kids all the time, I got confident in my ability to learn stuff. Like yes. I know how to learn. And, you know, like the, so the cartoon series I produced, Hood Science, I, I taught myself all the animation, I voiced five of the characters, I, produced, <laughs> I edited the video, I scripted it, I came up with the whole hero's journey style narrative, I designed all the characters from scratch. This was stuff that I taught myself using technology, using YouTube, uh, but I was confident in my ability to get to that goal uh, because I had completed a STEM education. Yes. So I knew, that I, I knew that I could persist through the learning curve and teach myself how to do something. And so I think that's a big thing about STEM as well. And that, that's super cool. And you, you hit a point. It's so interesting. Once you learn how to like to design thinking or system thinking and you understand the, ten, the STEM world, you can teach yourself anything. You know, I've taught myself how to code. I've taught myself how to use Adobe Creative Suite. Well, at that time it was, um, yeah, it was Creative Suite 3 and design websites and all this. And I oh, made man, that was back in the day, man. Yeah, that, that <laughs> was, that was that, yeah, so, and I taught myself how to do all this stuff, how, how to use Premiere and Audition, right. you know, I, I got down. So, and that was just because I had the confidence through technology, I can master anything. Mm -hmm. And that's what's helped me. And, and everything you see me do and touch is basically I've done it myself, even digital marketing, you know, Google AdWords, everything else. And it was just because going into a STEM field taught me design thinking and system thinking. And it all is just very relatable and it all connects. It's all logical. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think where a lot of folks miss it is an entrepreneur. You want to be able to have system thinking and design thinking, like very much like you said, you want to know the MVP. Um, and that, that's what those are all super important things. So I do appreciate you for sharing that from your perspective. Because mm -hmm. again, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting old. Maybe I'm too, <laughs> but but no, like you say, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, man. So the other thing I think of is like, I still feel like I'm a scientist in a way. Uh, because like a lot of the digital marketing stuff for me, it's kind of like a laboratory experiment where I'm gathering this data and I'm yeah. like doing literal social experiments 
Uh, I mean, it's, it's more like social science, right? But it's it like, <laughs> but it's like you literally like you put out some content, you see how people engage with it. Oh, okay, they engage really well with this animated content. Let me make a cartoon. Okay, they engage really well with this cartoon. Let me make two cartoons. Okay, they engage that well with this one. Let's figure it out with you know what I mean. So it's all about kind of like this iterative process where you, you're like experimenting and getting data and coming back, and that's something that you have to master in the science field. So Absolutely. you know, like all of these things, I feel like I'm still using. <laughs> Uh, it's just that I'll, I'll kind of remix them uh, to, you know, for, for my own new needs. Well, you know, that, that's really good. I'm happy that you are articulating that. I'm happy that you're communicating that. And I think you hit like every freaking point I could imagine as being an entrepreneur. You talked about the discipline. You talked about doing the research. You talked about doing the work. You talked about, you know, the MVPs. You talked about just, just for those of people who don't know, that's viable products. That basically a product that you could show people that this is a, this can work. That's for those who don't know that. Yeah, um, I got to do that, man. Yeah, man, my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. That no worries. No worries. the case is. But just to see somebody of your age just have so much, just I'm excited. You give me so much energy. You, you just inspired me, man. I'm about to go figure out what I could create next. But in any <laughs> case, <laughs> so like, like I said, you know, just you just hitting all those great points. Like I said, the discipline, the focus, you reworking things, the research, you giving back as far as a mentee, you understanding mentors. You, and I heard when you said you were listening to people like on this um, podcast to help yourself break through all that, that, that junk. Also, you didn't let fear stop you. You, you, you conquered fear by saying, I'm more scared of being scared. That's powerful. You know, yeah, that, that's it's internal. It's internal. I think, you know, it was great to have those mentors in my life to like kind of expedite that process for yes. me, probably in a more uncomfortable way. Yes. But I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, I can't, I couldn't rely on external motivation for overcoming fear. Like that's something internally you got to work out. Uh, and that's, that's something, that's something you got to go to battle with. You got to go to war with yourself. Uh, you know, like so many of the early states, so many times when I was first starting out, I felt like it was me against the world. You know, yeah. um, it's actually a Kendrick Lamar lyric. I think it was part <laughs> of the, it, was, it was always me against the world until I found this me versus me. <laughs> yeah, like that. That's that's how I felt, man. I, I like you know. At a certain point, I had to come back to 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 my base, and I had to realize, like, wait a minute, this is all mental. This is this. Yes. Is, what am I not doing? You know, how can I? How can I continue to sustain this? How can I overcome? And I'll say, like, you know, there's a there's definitely a big mental health aspect of it all. Um, yes. I think I actually hit more, one of my first. I, I wouldn't call it a breakdown, but I think for me, what happened was just I, I, I was at too high of a level of productivity for too long. Yes. And I wasn't balanced enough. And I like my body, my mind just automatically kind of, I, I, at the same time that I got the flu, it kind of just it took me out for like longer than it should have. Uh -huh. but that was because I hadn't been balancing out my life. Uh, and so that's definitely a big part of it. That's something that I kind of was aggressively just going to keep pushing until, I, until it broke. Uh, and so, you know, for me, that I ended up, you know, having to figure all that stuff out on the back end. But I think it would have been wiser for me to 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 celebrate more accomplishments and and kind of take some time to relax. It definitely ain't easy, but it's definitely a marathon. You know, it's definitely yes. not like you don't have to sprint every single day. That's not how that's not how it works. Um, you know, I'm I'm so glad that I didn't have like this some viral video come out and yes. I just became a viral success because I wouldn't appreciate the journey. The process and know what it takes to maintain this correct um and, and and to take and to get this from from the mud from the ground up yes uh and so you know yeah those are things that i that i definitely became more cognizant of as well you know just on the journey well thank you for sharing all that great information and man i'm gonna have to have you back because i think you just held so much value especially you know hearing somebody again i, I don't mean keep calling you young with the case this is my little brain you know <laughs> it's just, i'm excited because i don't hear this very often especially for a 24 year old man if i could tell you what i was doing at 24 boy you know, <laughs> well, so well you know for me I, you know i'm i'm, I'm definitely single uh, so you know, I'm, I'm out there on the dating scene and, you know, like, I think 24 is a great age, man, because like, yes. I'm, at, I'm at the the youngest possible age where I don't get the baby comment as much. <laughs> like for the past three years since I've been in the professional world, I've been, you a baby, you a baby, you a baby. Yes. 24? They're like, you kind of a baby, but I mean, you're 24 though. Like, so, you know, so I can I can appreciate this age and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not rushing it. Uh, cause I'm, I'm, I'm trying to enjoy this, ride this youth wave as long as I can.
Well, definitely ride it, man. And I'm just so, you know, honestly, I'm proud of you, really, really, for all the accomplishments, you know. When I, when I see somebody, especially, you know, from a minority background, finding success for such a young age, it just makes me really happy. Just see that. Uh, not enough of us who's, you know, basically leveling up and scaling up. It's just it's not enough. So this Absolutely. is very powerful to me. And this really is near and dear to my heart just to see, you know, a young brother coming from STEM and just a young brother who's just doing so many great things and getting people to see him for the value he truly has. So congratulations to you to all that because you are very valuable to all of us. Well, thank you, man. I, I really appreciate that, man. I, I really hope the audience gets some value from it too, man. Because that's that's my thing, man. I'm, yes. I'm all about. I don't, don't want to waste nobody's ear time. Uh, yes, yes. So that's, yeah, I want to do that as, much as I can. Uh, yes. So yeah, I'd love to come back. and would love to do it whenever you know, whenever that time works out. Okay, excellent. And just real quick, I want you to give your plugs. How can people find you? Websites, social media. Let us know. Sure. So you can Google me, uh, Justin Schaefer, S-H-A-I-F-E-R. And yes. if you're on IG, you can check me out at Mr. Fascinate. So I'm okay. Mr. Dot Fascinate, the word Fascinate, F-A-S-C-I-N-A-T-E. Um, but yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, on Facebook. But yeah, if you Google me, I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere on Google. So. And your TEDx talk. Uh, yeah, sure. It's on YouTube, right? We can find that yeah, on YouTube. So you, you, if you type in how to speak Generation Z. Okay. Uh, well, that should come up. It should be in the first page. And yeah, definitely a top of search results. So I think it's at 150,000 views now. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, that's, that's really darn good. You, you got me it's beat by, up. you got me by, beat by 149,000. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, man, it's, it's it, you know, like part of that is marketing, you know, like that's yes. a big part of it, um, which is, you know, goes back to I, before I got on that stage, I understood keywords and all that. I was, yes. I was kind of playing that game. So, um, so yeah, man, I, I, I think I'd love to come back on and, and, and talk about it some more. I know we're probably getting close to our time. Yeah, well, I, I loved it. I love the conversation. I loved everything that you brought, all the value. You definitely hit some real key points. I'm really excited and proud of like, all, all the work that you're doing. And I'm, we're definitely going to have you back. So um, I think with that being said, I think uh, that's it. So, Well, thanks for the time, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. So that's all I have. I'm gone. Peace.